What's going on guys? Beastly Gamer here. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to talk about PlayStation VR and what we think it'll take for the VR to be successful. Now my first thoughts were that we need a killer application. It has to be a game on PlayStation VR that really has a very immersive nature. One that you put the headset on, you've got the PlayStation Move Sticks, and you feel like you're in a completely different world that nails tone, and you feel like you're transported to a different kind of place. My idea on the Beastly Thoughts show was to create a carnival app or like a kind of PlayStation Store type of application that goes with PlayStation VR where you put it on and you're at a carnival and you can walk around and talk to your friends and you can ride roller coasters together and you can ride Ferris wheels and all that crazy stuff at a carnival. In my mind, I like carnivals, so that made a lot of sense. But on the flip side of that coin, a lot of people aren't into that kind of atmosphere. And I came across a really interesting article that kind of sums up what will make or break the PlayStation VR. And it seems like the PlayStation VR has a great chance of nailing this in spades. This article is on techinsider.io. I will drop a link in the description. This is what the head of PlayStation VR thinks will make or break virtual reality. The man at the helm of PlayStation's virtual reality efforts believes no one game will convince you to buy Sony's virtual reality headset. Instead, he believes that the thing most likely to convince you that you can't live without PlayStation VR is presence. What's that? Presence is the feeling of being transported somewhere else and actually being there. Present, if you will. Presence is the killer app, he says. Put another way, PlayStation VR doesn't have a killer app. That's a term applied for a particular piece of software so awesome that it can sell the hardware necessary to run it. And Richard Marks, the head of PlayStation's R&D department dubbed Magic Lab, thinks PlayStation VR doesn't need one. On the Nintendo 64, it was Mario 64. On PS2, it was Grand Theft Auto 3. But Marx thinks virtual reality is a totally different beast that any game capable of giving someone that unique feeling of presence only virtual reality can provide will convince them of its merits. Mark broke down the components of creating that sense of presence into five categories. Number one, static image quality. The fidelity of the images on the screen, whether or not there is a prominent screen door effect, a term which describes whether or not you can see individual pixels. Number two, head tracking. The ability of the screen to dynamically change what you're seeing as you move your head in different directions. A headset's failure to do this at a high level of fidelity can cause disorientation and nausea. Number three, hand body awareness. The ability of a headset to make you feel like your body occupies virtual space. For example, when you look down you see your character's hands and when people step closer to you they actually change in size. Number four, environmental response. The world around you stays consistent even as you move through it. If you leave an object on a table, turn away and then turn back, it will still be there. And number five, social. Other people experience the game in the virtual space too. Through discussing it, it becomes more real to the both of you. One thing's for sure, unless people can actually try out the PlayStation VR for themselves, they're going to have a hard time justifying the cost. PlayStation VR is going to cost between four and five hundred dollars, depending on which bundle you pick. We'll see how Mark's philosophy pans out when PlayStation VR launches this October at a kingly sum of $400. This really, to me, sums up, guys, what VR needs to be. And basically, all it is is immersion. As long as you have an immersive experience, it's going to sell you on it. We are used to interfacing in our actual real 3D world. You know, this is a real third dimension in reality that we live in. And so to put on a headset and feel like we're in a completely different reality, one that seems tangible, that experience alone will sell you on what VR is. If you put on a headset and you are instantly transported to another world that in some way, shape, or form feels real. If your hands are being tracked, if you've got a camera tracking your head movement, all that stuff is going to seem much more realistic. The high frame rate, the static image quality, you know, the hand and body awareness I think is a really big deal. Of course, as uh, VR goes further and further in technology, that's going to make a big difference. Uh, in the home initially, having that camera tracking your head and tracking your hands is going to be a very, very surreal feeling. I think PlayStation VR has all this stuff in spades. And from what I've heard from other people who've actually had a chance to try out the VR, it has some of the best tracking, best controller, and uh, some of the best hardware out there. Of course, the headset isn't as good as some of the more high-end competitors, but when it comes to the camera tracking, uh, the hand tracking, and the actual controls, PlayStation VR has it in spades. You guys let me know what you think will make or break the PlayStation VR as far as success. 
What do you think they need to release? What do you think they need to have as far as hardware in order to keep people interested in what the VR has to offer? Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give a thumbs up and show support for the channel. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe now. I'm the Beastly Gamer, and I'll see you guys next time. Let it go.